Okay, so this is following on from where we have been working on calculations, mass to mass calculations in class. Um, and today what, what we're going to do is we're going to basically look to see how we can apply the concept of the stoichio stoichiometric method to an actual experiment. So what I'm actually going to, going to do is I'm going to mix some strontium nitrate, 2 grams of it, with some copper 2 sulfate. And you can see down here that what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh out 2.56 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate and 2.00 uh, grams of strontium nitrate. And then I'm going to add 75 mils of distilled water to it. Um, I'm going to join the two together and create a precipitate. And then I'm going to filter that precipitate. So before we even begin, the great thing about stoichiometry and what I've been um, talking about in class is that we can actually predict how much mass we should get down here at, um, on our product side because we have the information down here of how many, much grams we started off with, our molar mass which we got from the periodic table and what we're going to do is of course look to see if there's any coefficients here on the side which there's not and we can use that information, that mole ratio to work out how much mass we're going to get. We can predict it before we even get it. Now we often can't get exactly the correct amount of mass that we predict in these equations because we lose part of our product through our experiment and it kind of messes up with our results. So I'm just going to move down to, um, I've already actually weighed out our amount of uh, solid that we've got here. So you can see this is my two beakers where I've used my measuring solid that I've put my 75 mils of distilled water and I've already done that. I've already weighed this out. You can actually see that the strontium nitrate is a white crystalline substance. So I'm going to pour this into the beaker like so and pour this one into the beaker and then I'm going to use stirring on to stir it. Okay, so I'm actually going to stir these and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so you can actually see I've mixed my two solids, the strontium nitrate here and my copper sulfate solution here. And what I'm actually going to do is join them together and we should see a precipitate being formed. So there's my precipitate in the, um, in the beaker. And now what I'm gonna do, you can see it's just actually sit, sitting there, it's taking a while to form. Let's just focus in on that so you can actually see. Okay, you can see that solid in there. And what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm gonna use a new piece of um, equipment that I'm gonna introduce to you. This is what we have been using up until now in class, a normal filter. Um, and we usually put the filter paper inside and we filter our substance. But when we move up in chemistry, we get to use this piece of equipment here, which is called a, I can never pronounce it correctly, Bu Buchner um, uh, aspirator. And what it actually does, and you can see I've already set it up here in case you use this in class, is the thick end I attach to um, this faucet here. And the skinny part I have facing downwards, and that's where our water's gonna come in. If you actually look into the sink, I put a towel in there, and that's just to prevent the splash back. And the water's gonna run all the way down, and it's actually gonna create some suction happening here along the side, and it's, it's going to make our filtration process much more efficient, um, and hopefully we're not going to lose as much solid. So we're just gonna turn this on, starting off gently to start off with, and turning it up. You need to make sure all the um, tubes are securely fastened. Let it sit for a while. And our precipitate, you can actually see it's really precipitated out now. We're just gently going to pour, and you can actually see what I've done before I even started is I put a little bit of distilled water onto our filter paper, and it just sticks, and um, it creates that suction that we're after. Okay, so I'm going to pour 
I'll throw that in. The liquid's going to drain into the Erlenmeyer flask. And we need to make sure that we have as much precipitate in there as possible. Now this could take some time because obviously I have to sit and wait. For the liquid to actually be sucked out. So I'm going to get back to you shortly once I've finished filtrating the solid. Okay, so we have successfully managed to... Um, extract all the leftover fluid from our precipitate and this is what we're left with. This is our, our mass that's been left behind, our precipitate. And what we're going to do is we're going to very carefully remove this piece of filter paper with our precipitate in it, on it, put it onto a watch glass and stick it into our oven so we can dry it and accurately weigh the precipitate that's been left over. Now there was one thing I forgot to mention before I did this experiment. You need to weigh the piece of filter paper before you begin the experiment because you're going to have to need to use this in your calculations because if you actually look at <coughs> when you remove this piece of filter paper, you can see that the precipitate is going to be almost impossible to remove off the piece of filter paper. So that's our precipitate there. And you can actually see if you look in here, and this is actually, this is quite important. I don't know if you can catch this, but sometimes there's tiny bits of precipitate left around the side and it's very difficult to get that. So you, you account for that in your error when you come up to writing your error. So we're actually going to put this and we're going to leave it in our drying oven overnight for 20, 24 hours. And then once it's dry, we're actually going to weigh that um, and we're going to record our results and do our calculations um, once we've got that information.